<laughs> oh, uh, this is a rabbit or a bunny. And uh, yeah, I know it looks pretty crusty, but don't judge me. This, it, this rabbit belongs to my dogs. They love it to bits. That's why it's kind of, it looks like a bit of a nightmare there. But yeah, pretty bad shape that one. Let me introduce you to a much cuter bunny. Ta-da! This is Furry. Furry the bunny. It's in this video today, I'm going to talk about the Fur Audio 5X5. Let's do it. What's cracking audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. So here's Furry the bunny, as you see on the box. And uh, when I first saw this box, actually, I was, I was like, what, uh, are you serious? That's it? Because the retail price of the 5X5 here is $999. So when I saw the box, I was like, you gotta be kidding me, that, that's it? Well, hopefully uh, the earphone experience is awesome and makes up for that. Let's have a look inside. You open the box and I thought, well, okay, there you go. There's a bit of a case there, of course. And then, oh, what do we got here? What do we got here? Hey, look at that. Let me introduce you to Furry the Bunny. Now this is Fur Audio's little mascot he's a pretty cool little guy love it or hate it I think it's pretty cool so it's a very simple unboxing experience but it's kind of got its charms about it you know what I mean here you can see the fur audio logo on the carrying case the faux leather carrying case inside here of course you get your 5x5 earphones and let's have a look at them of course you also get your silicone ear tips and a little cleaning brush in there as well but here's the 5x5 Let's have a look at these now. We'll come in for a closer look. Okay, so here we are. And this is Furry, Furry the Bunny on the side there. So this is the 5X5. Now these are made of a very durable, very uh, robust feeling aluminum or aluminium. Got the fur logo on the left side, Furry the Rabbit on the right side. Now this white layer around the outside is actually DuPont plastic. It's extremely durable and robust plastic. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the reason is, but I think it looks pretty cool. It fits in with the overall aesthetic and um, I, I think they actually look pretty awesome. So that's basically the shells. They've got an MMCX connector there. And just in front of that connector, you see those two little things there? That is the Atom pressure release module. And basically what that does is it eliminates that sort of uh, pressure buildup or cabin pressure, some people call it, that you get when you, ear, when, when you wear, sorry, in-ear monitors for extended periods of time. So this Atom module actually relieves that pressure and uh, it really works. You can wear these for hours and hours and they don't build up any pressure inside your ears. There's your little nozzle with a bit of protective mesh inside. By the way, so the price of these, the price is not for the faint hearted, it's $999. But uh, actually, the day this video goes live, the this will be released on Drop for those in the US. I'm not sure if they ship internationally or not, but you can pick them up on Drop for $799. Is that a good deal? We'll get to that later. So inside here, this is a Penta driver IEM, which means it's got five drivers. It's got one dynamic driver for the base and four balanced armature drivers for everything else. And in terms of comfort, uh, I actually find these to be really good. You can see the length of the nozzle there is it's nice and long. So you can, with the right tips, you can get a really nice secure fit. These are of course my personal third party ear tips, my go-tos, because they're bigger than your average included ear tips of course but that is the earpiece they feel great build quality is great comfort is really good let's have a look at the cable now and this is a really nice cable it's a silver plated copper with MMCX connectors of course you get an aluminium 
Y split with furry on it. Nice attention to detail. You also get this aluminium chin slider. So people, some people love to use those. And finally, at the end, is a 2.5 millimeter balanced termination. And the cable feels really nice. It handles very nicely as well. Overall, it is a very nice, lovely cable, good quality, and it matches the aesthetic of the 5X5 just perfectly. Okay, so you've seen the cute little guy. Let's talk about how it sounds. And I gotta tell you, man, the 5X5 here is a great sounding IEM. Now you've probably heard, if you're into the uh, IEM and audiophile scene in general, you've probably heard about diminishing returns, which basically means that the higher you go up in price, the less return you get in terms of audio upgrade. For example, the difference between a $20 earphone and a $100 earphone can be very significant uh, but when you get sort of over two, three hundred dollars, as you go up in price, the improvements become less and less drastic. But uh, in this day and age, you know, a thousand dollars or nine hundred ninety-nine dollars is is not anywhere near the top. You know, earphones go up to three, four, even five thousand dollars for a pair. So coming in here, these are not exactly top of the line flagship, but they are up there, very premium hi-fi, some even might call summit fi earphones. But I'm going to tell you how they sound and they sound really, really good. Uh, the overall tonality of these is fairly balanced. It's quite linear. So the mids and I mean the bass and the mid range and the treble, it's all fairly on an even level. Uh, the detail retrieval is superb. I guess you could call the overall tonality bright neutral. It's a it's not really neutral, it is linear as I mentioned, but it does have a bit of warmth, a nice bit of warmth in the low end, but it does have a kind of a brighter tonality. It's got some treble energy, but let's break it down and we'll start with the bass. Now the 5X5 here actually has some technology that's trickled down from Fur Audio's uh, flagship series, which is their M series. One of those technologies included here is called direct bass, I think. Oh, if I'm wrong, I'll put it up on the screen. But what it means is they actually attach the dynamic driver or the woofer driver directly to the inside of the chassis, inside of the shell. And what this enables them to do is to have a very controlled, very fast bass very light bass that doesn't interfere with the mids or the the treble but because it's attached to the shell it, it actually uses the entire housing as a sort of acoustic chamber so when it's rumbling down in there you get a physical sensation of the bass and um i've got to tell you, it's hard to explain but it works extremely well like this balance this uh dynamic driver rather has kind of properties more akin to a balanced armature driver. It's extremely controlled. It's a very fast driver. It's a very fast bass. No unwanted resonance, no bloom, and definitely no boominess. But it does, it does have a really satisfying sort of feeling of impact, weight to it. it the the sub-bass rumble is there. It's, it's a somewhat slight rumble, but you do feel it in your ears and you can feel the sort of the light thumping from the mid bass as well. And it's just a very satisfying bass tuning and I really love the way that they've done it. It's a fantastic technology. I would love to try some of their M series just to see, you know, how the different implementations of that direct bass technology. But it is super super nice moving on to the mid-range now and the mids have fantastic clarity but uh, they don't sound analytical at all they're kind of uh, very spacious sounding very clean mid-range vocals sound very natural male vocals are actually nicely bodied full bodied and have a nice rich tone to them so male vocals are full bodied and warm and rich but uh, very nicely textured as well. So female vocals are uh, slightly elevated, a little bit forward sounding, but they're not shrill, they're not harsh at all or shouty. 
they sound very natural. Electric guitars have got great texture to them. They sound a bit grungy. They've got a nice amount of bite to them without being shrill or harsh as well. And in addition, snare drums have got a nice clean attack, but percussion instruments in general got a very nice clean attack without being too sharp or too tight for lack of a better term. But overall, these have a, a very nice mid-range, really pleasing to listen to, great resolution, excellent detail. And finally, that leaves us with the treble and the a very interesting treble on these. Normally, I'm not really a fan of treble forward earphones. And then these aren't necessarily treble forward, but they do have a little bit more upper treble energy than what I'm used to from listening to all the chi-fi. This is the other way around. There's a slight dip in the lower treble and then it, uh, at around 8, 8, 10 kilohertz and then again further on it comes up again. So it's got this nice open, open airy treble. But again, there's no sibilance. It's not harsh. It's, it doesn't sound brittle or metallic or artificial at all. It's a really lovely natural sounding treble but it is, it is forward enough to make the overall tonality somewhat bright, but it blends in beautifully with the warmth that you get from the bass. And the mid-range is lovely and clear, uncluttered, very good uh, throughout. From top to bottom, these are a fantastic sounding earphone, and I have been really enjoying them so much. So I'll do a real quick comparison now with the Sennheiser IE800S here. Now this is another earphone that I love dearly. Really, really tiny, as you can see there, um, which has advantages and disadvantages, like with this sort of proprietary style cable, you can't really wear these over ear, so they have to hang down, which is okay, but they're super lightweight, of course. They're very small, and the build quality is awesome. They are metal shells as well. But in terms of sound signature, the IE800S here is a lot warmer and kind of thicker in tonality than the 5X5. It has more bass presence, particularly more sub bass presence. These have got a real nice rumble going on. Very, very controlled rumble. It has a wonderful texture and feeling to it. Slightly less uh, in the mid bass, but that warmth carries over into the mid range and the mid range notes are kind of thicker, rounder and there's, it's more warm in general throughout the mid-range. The instruments in the mid-range are just ever so slightly recessed, but these have a very good um, emphasis on vocals. Vocals really stand out, and uh, these, these have one of the best vocal reproductions that I've heard um, in an earphone, particularly in this price range, but in general, very, very sweet vocals on here. And in terms of treble, the, the Sennheiser here has a more, more laid back, more relaxed, rounded, sort of softened treble compared to the 5X5, which is a bit more precise, a bit more vivid and stark in comparison. Yeah, so to sum it up, the Sennheiser, warmer, thicker, bassier, smoother, whereas the 5X5, a bit more energetic, better clarity, better instrument separation, overall slightly better resolution as well so there you go both great earphones uh, I couldn't really choose between them you know I'm fortunate in my position where I'm I, I am able to have different uh, sounding earphones for different moods or different days whatever and I think that's a good thing to get into no matter what sort of price bracket you're into it's great to have two or even more sets of earphones that you can switch up every now and then just for a change and um, just to keep it more interesting. So let's sum it up now. How is the 5X5 and the Little Furry Bunny? You know what? These are probably my top pick at that $1,000-ish uh, price mark at the moment. And like I mentioned before, these are going live on Drop drop.com and you can pick them up there for $799 which is a full $200 off the retail price which which is just unbelievable. I would say this is a great earphone at the full $999 price but at the $799 a full $200 off these are an absolute steal. Highly recommend these. 
These are one of my favorites, not just in any particular price range, but in just overall, I love the, their presentation, their tonality, the comfort, the build, and their cute little appearance. I think this is a wonderful earphone. Can't wait to try out some more FIR or Fur Audio products in the future. And that about sums it up for this video, guys. So let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think of Furry the Bunny here? Don't forget there's a link to the full written review in the description below, as well as links to all my social media channels and Discord, etc. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, Parfam audiophile style. And if you're new to the channel and want to see more reviews like this in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, me and Furry, we'll see you later.